Okay. Um, so <laughs> hi, uh, this is Joe Maycook here with the PHS Cultivating Community Gardens Histories Project and North Square Neighborhood Project. And we are in uh, the community garden at 2224 North 2nd Street. Um, and I'm here with Wanda Romero, uh, uh, who Thomas Eda Romero's daughter, well, Thomas Eda Romero and Antonio Romero Sr.'s daughter, correct? Right, correct. Yes. Well, uh, if it's not, I thank you for sharing that. If it's right. not too, if it's not prying too much, I guess I've heard a lot about Tomasita, obviously, right. but I wanted to ask you all, but I guess this conversation has piqued my curiosity mm -hmm. about your dad. Yes. Yes. My dad, like I said, he, um, she met him in Puerto Rico, you know, when they were young. Um, in Ponce? In Ponce. They're both from Ponce. Yeah. And um, my dad was an orphan also, which is a very sad story. At least my mother wasn't an orphan, I shouldn't say that. My mother wasn't an orphan. Her father died when she was young, yes, but she had her mother. My father, unfortunately, his parents died when he was a baby. Um, I think his mother um, died, I think, of tuberculosis, and his father was a policeman on the island. And um, According to him, something tragic happened and he passed away. We're not sure if it had to do with being a policeman or if he was sick. He quite didn't get the whole story. So he was an orphan and he was, unfortunately, he was raised by a poor woman on the island who was an alcoholic and so was her husband. But there were so many kids that they just scattered the kids around, you know? So my father said he really had a tough upbringing because um, they didn't have money and not much food so he would go to school with no shoes on and and you know like practically the same old clothes and things like that so when you hear those kind of stories and you see that he became a self-educated man i mean he read a lot of books when he could he would go to the library and um when he became a young man you know very young that's when he went into the service you know to get out of the poverty Korea. Yeah, to, yeah, he just enlisted. He voluntarily enlisted because he figured what could be any worse than what I'm living on the island. So, yeah, he did that very 21 when he went, you know, to um, war. So that was pretty rough for a young man, you know. And he was wounded, so he got the Purple Heart as well. And um, that was, you know, pretty hard for him also, you know, to heal from his wounds. But, um, you know, these are the things that from your ancestors and your, your history, mm -hmm. you know, that helps to um, make you who you will become, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a person, hopefully productive in society, helpful, kind. You know, these are the traits that you want to have. You know, a lot of times, like I said, you know, I work in a professional world, a lot of doctors and nurses, you know, and it's wonderful, you know, to, to hear their ancestors as well. I hear their stories and, you know, you, you you have pride in, in, you know, where you came from, right. you know, what made you, you know. It, yeah, education is definitely important. you got to have that, you know, in order to um, be successful in life. But also don't forget, just don't forget about your ancestors because, you know, that's part of who you are, I believe. Young, but, um, you know, it, with all that being said, he, you know, when he got out and he um, was done his service, he went back to school. And he educated himself. He went to um, a university and he got a degree in criminal um, fingerprinting. And um, so, so when he got that degree, you know, was back, I think, in, I guess later 50s. And he couldn't get a job because, again, the discrimination in this country would not allow him to, I guess, get a job. So he found himself lost. He didn't know what to do. Well educated, you know, um, he went to St. Joe's. That's where he got his, his uh, degree in criminal fingerprinting and, and forensic, forensic medi whatever, medicine, whatever it's called. But he turned around and he enlisted in the Merchant Marines. So with that, because he couldn't get a job in, in what he had studied, so he traveled all over the world. He made a career out of it. And he stayed for about 40 years, traveling all over the world like six times. So we used to get excited because every time he came home, he bought souvenirs from all over the world. So our house was like a museum. Yeah, we had stuff from Africa, from China, you know, from uh, Russia. He went to Russia many times. So he would teach us 
And he would say, you think you're the only ones here? It's a big world we live in, you know? And he would teach us the different, you know, cultures of every country he went to. So I got my travel bug through him because I wanted to see and learn because he would bring back pictures and dolls for me from different countries. So I, w I loved it. And I said, oh, dad, someday I would love to go to some of these places, you know? So I get the traveling. My mother didn't want to go anywhere. She was fine. But me, I was like, dad, I want to go, you know? So I got that from him. So yes, he, he was very, very educated. But he got his degree, he, very smart, worked for the post office also. So he got, had many, many talents, worked in many different things. And he was a, a great carpenter, could make anything from wood. That's cool. He learned that as a child. So, you know, it's amazing all the things you can learn. You know, you, you can have degrees in a lot of things, but you also have gifts, you know. So, yeah, he, um, they were opposites, very opposites, which was amazing. My mother was quiet, you know, didn't want to travel the world, but, you know, she loved her garden. She loved teaching. She taught children, little children. She worked for the school board of education. So, you know, they both had good talents when you, when you think about what they both created and what they both done with their lives because they came from poverty, both of them. They complimented each other. Yes, they did. It was amazing. I was amazed. I was like, oh God, you know, you know, two opposites. But sometimes they say opposites attract, yeah. you know, they do. You know, one could be an intellect and the other one mm, a little spacey, you know, but it's okay because it worked. Mm -hmm. It did. My father, you know, he loved her to death. He really did. Mm -hmm. They had a beautiful marriage. Yeah. That's good. Um, but so I guess, um, so we, you've talked a bit about, you know, your experience with, yeah, coming to um, Kensington right. neighborhood. Right. Yeah, from Fairmount. Um, you talked a bit about Tomasita and your father, um, whose name is... Antonio Romero Sr. Oh, Antonio Romero Sr. Right. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, and, yeah, I feel like... I, I'm sorry, I saw his okay. name, and I couldn't, and I did not remember it. But, um, so, um, I guess I wanted to... So, I guess I wanted to talk a little bit more about this garden, if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Um, so, have you been here for the duration that it's for the last like 20 years whatnot. Yes, yes yes with my mom yes i yes. have and uh, um you know we um we used to have more veggies mm -hmm. and and more um fruit but um the weather sometimes doesn't permit you know um mm -hmm. a lot of growth um depending on how good the weather is so now we're more like plants and flowers we're more uh, with the flowers mm -hmm. are there any flowers you want to point out to me. Um, I know it's not well, the best season, yeah, see, but... This is mom's uh, famous uh, rose bush. Oh. Yeah, it's beautiful. You see, we're already uh, almost in the uh, well, uh, end of October, middle, you know, and November, and, and look how pretty. We still have roses. Yeah. Yeah. It's well pruned. Right, yeah. still. And, um, yeah, over here we have some the smaller ones. These are the miniature ones. Oh, the miniature the roses. The miniature roses. Yeah, miniature oh, roses. Yeah, they here. are. They are, they yeah. are delightful. But see, too. you really can't see too much now, only because of the winter. Yeah, it's right. kind of stops us from seeing, you know. Well, I can see. <laughs> yeah. I can see you have some nice hosta pots, so yeah. I, I appreciate those. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we're trying to, you know, I mean, to keep it, you know, again, I'm working a lot, so I don't have a lot of time. So I usually get Eddie Brown, Iris's brother. He comes and helps me to clean it up because, you know, you have to keep it nice. If you don't, the city, uh, they give you a fine. They come by and they look. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have gotten sometimes if my bushes go above the fence line, I've gotten a $70 citation. I almost died. I said $70. I had to pay the ticket too. I had to pay it. I said, oh God, I'll never do that again. Because if it goes above that line, for some reason, it's against the city ordinance of having the tree or bushes too high. Yeah, so they, and they check. When you least suspect it, they drive around. I was blown away. My mother never got a citation. <laughs> goes to wow. show you. Yeah, she never got a citation. Me, I get a citation. 
Well, okay. I, I, so speaking of your mother again, though. Um, right. So uh, I remember now. Yeah, one of the first things that I Iris talked to me about with um, Tomasita and Grupo Motivos was making food. Yes, um, the cooking. Advice. And I know that and I've now heard a story also um, from someone um, who uh, s s talked about your mother's mojitos. Um, right, the mojitos, and, yes. yes. <laughs> Those four mojitos. Oh, were, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, but, you know, she was more famous for her egg custard flan which was a dessert, very delicious. Mojitos, yeah, were nice, but she was really well known. Uh, there were restaurants that wanted to contract her. Yeah, for her flans, but you know, it was too much work. She couldn't make like 15, 20 every day for a restaurant, you know, that was insane. But, um, you know, I told she was, she would make them and give them to her friends, you know, for birthdays, celebrations, um, you know, holidays, Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, they would. Oh, and that and the bread pudding. The bread pudding, which is with the raisins. And oh, my God, so sweet and delicious. And you know, it's funny because I was always working. Everybody says, someday you're going to wish you would have listened and you would have cooked with her and you would have learned it because I never learned it. <laughs> I was too busy working <laughs> crazy hours, you know. And I, and I said to myself, you know, I messed up. I messed up because I never learned it. I should have. <laughs> I would have been making lots of money now. <laughs> no, but anyway. Well, you yeah. you have a, you your career is doing similar things. Yeah. Well, no, I'm taking care of the sick. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a dialysis technician, so I take care of the sick that are on dialysis. I, you know, help mm -hmm. that way and keep them alive. You know, so it's it's a also. Yeah, you're carrying out the same kind of helping yes. generosity yes. ethic. Yes, yes. You, this is true. Yes, right. all the way it's back sort of, to the bloodline. Yeah, it goes the, through the bloodline. Yeah, <laughs> right. there you go. I do it in a different form, but you know, I, I love my work. It's hard, but and it's depressing sometimes. You see a lot of sick people, but um, I, I feel good at the end that I help someone to stay alive because without that machine, they can't live. You know, if you don't have dialysis, your kidneys aren't functioning. You can't live, so they have to go three times a week for four hours each treatment. Mm -hmm. So it's it's long, grueling, but you know at least I'm helping, you know, somebody. So mm -hmm. it it is rewarding. Yeah. Um, so I guess I was gonna ask you, have any favorite stories about Tomasita or about you know this living in here with her? Um, you know. I'll you tell know. you. I'll tell you one story that um, really just blew my mind. Um, mom even used to visit um, the prisoners, prisoners. And I once said to her, you don't know these people, mom. I said, why are you visiting the prison system? Like I, it, I, I couldn't wrap my head around it, but I wanted to understand it. So I said, aren't you scared? I, you know, she goes, no. She says, that's somebody's son, you know, um, somebody's daughter. Um, and for whatever reasons that they, you know, cross a line somewhere and broke the law and then ended up in prison she always said that's still somebody's son and that's still somebody's daughter and she says and a lot of times their families don't even want to visit them you know or won't go to visit them and I said okay so I said why are you visiting them she said because they need love too and if their family don't give it to them you know she was very religious my mother was very religious very catholic born and raised to her grandmother you know she prayed a lot of rosaries she went to a lot of churches and that was one that was something that really really touched me I was like wow that brings me to tears too mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it I was like wow I said she visits prisoners she don't even know these people I'm like oh my god to me she was like I used to say to her and I did and a lot of my family members used to say if she didn't get married she should have been a nun she really should have been a nun, seriously. She had all the traits of being a nun. You know how just she'll do anything for anybody. She'll, she'll give them her last dollar. She didn't care. She didn't care. I, I could tell. She didn't um, care. I used to say to her, but mom, why do you do this? She says, they need help. And I'm like, but you don't know them. Doesn't matter. She says, someday you don't know if you may need help from somebody. And, you know, she was teaching me things that, whew, I was like, okay. You know, they're deep, deep. When you, when you hear somebody say that, you're like, wow. You know, she's teaching me something that I would have never even thought about. 
you know, not to be selfish. You know, because we, we can tend to do that when we have something or we have money or we're educated, you know, we make good money, whatever. You know, we have better things, better cars, you know, everything is not material. It's not. You know, in this society, we start thinking, you know, if I have more of this, more of that, no. You know, there are people that don't even have food on their table, you know, or a coat or a sweater. So there was another thing that my father taught me also. I used to see him giving people money that were you know begging for money and I used to say to him but dad you know they're probably going to buy drugs or, or liquor because they want to drink you know he says don't judge and don't 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 do that if they need money and you have it and you can give give them a dollar 50 cents whatever you want to give them he says don't do that he says you haven't walked in their shoes to see why they are where they are now and that was another tough lesson he taught me so I was like okay I kept quiet. I learned. I listened. I said, oh, now I'm doing it. <laughs> now I do it. I do it. It's crazy. I do it. I see somebody in the street, you know, whether, and I go, you know, here's a dollar, here's 50 cents, here's what I do. I'm following in their footsteps. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, they, you know, they made me who I am. I mean, I'm like, oh, wow, look, you're doing what your father used to do. You're, you're doing what your mother used to do, you know. But these are these are lessons that I think, while they're in heaven, both of them, that they are looking down and they can say, we taught her well, because we instilled in her what we wanted to instill in her, because I can admit I was selfish a little bit, you know, when I was growing up. But um, yeah, they taught me, you know, you're not always gonna be blessed, so give back, you know, give back, because so many people need. They're yeah. very generous people. Yeah. Yes, but... and, and you learn, you know, I, you know, and I don't, you know, I'm not doing this so I can get blessed or anything, but I do it because I know if I can help somebody, you know, I can help them and it's great, you know. If I can do it, I'll do it. Because you don't know. You don't know when you might need help from somebody. You don't know if you might be there in four or five years from now. You could lose it all. You don't know right. who's going to be on kidney dialysis. Dialysis, hey, there yeah. you go, you know. And at least I can say, well, I know a lot of my doctors and nurses I worked with all these years, they can help me out. But, um, yeah, so these are, these are things that, you know, you try to, you know, what your parents teach you, you know, to give back and to be kind, to be good. You know, everybody isn't blessed or lucky, you know. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at this point, so thank you for sh just sharing that as well. You're welcome. Um, the, yeah, th those are really, good. those are very, t like, touching stories for me yeah. too. But so I wanted to, I guess, ask, um, so do you have any... I remember you mentioned, you know, at, when you after you moved to this area, you mm -hmm. kind of like reconnected a little bit more of your culture through the work of Grupo Motivos, right? right? With the cooking right. and the like education um, and whatnot. Do you have any favorite stories from that as well, that process, or from working in the gardens? Um, well, like I said, you know, the, the things, you know, that you learn in school and, and you know, it's sad, but a lot of times you don't want to speak Spanish and you, you know, because you're in school and everything is English. And, um, and it was true even with um, um, Irish Brown had mentioned, which this was also true with me and my dad and my mom, um, how she said her granddaughter, I don't know if you remember, she mentioned that in when she was making the dolls that she yes. was making because, you know, they were black and she was making black dolls and she was more uh, a caramel color, canela, you know, she didn't want the black doll because she said, you know, I'm not black. So that resonates with me because my mother was very dark, very black, skin tone dark. Um, my two brothers are dark skin tone. My father was very white with light eyes and, you know, hair like yours, straight, you know, Castellano hair, as they say, because his ancestors were from Spain. So I was the, I came out the white child and my two brothers are the dark boys. I always wanted to be dark like them, you know, and I turned out white like my dad. So um, I, I understand as a child what that does because I saw the racism, you know, towards my mother. There were times, you know, when we were little, we would go somewhere and they would tell my dad, you can come in, but your wife can't come in. Yeah. And, and also when they were getting apartments, trying to get apartments on Fairmount and Green Street, you know, that's, you know, 
high society now, you know, but back then he couldn't get a rental place because they would tell him, we can rent it to you, but your wife can't live here because she's dark. Yeah, she and that was, was in the 60s. Yes, in the 60s. 60s and yeah, and the, yeah, I was I was born, I was maybe five or six I, as a child. So I remember those things and it hurts, you know, it hurts because, you know, you, you're, you're a child, you don't understand. And I used to say, but mommy, you're, you're a good person, you know, okay, you got dark skin, but you know, like, what's going on here? I couldn't understand that, you know, it's like, wow, the racism was brutal. Um, so I did re resonate with that and relate it when Iris, Iris was speaking of that because, again, I, I was like in the mix of it because, you know, my mother was very dark and my father was white. I mean, you know, I love them both. What, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, I'm like, I'm in the middle. Hello. But, you know, it was it was hard, you know, in school, you know, because I had the curly hair, but I was still, you know, a little light skin tone. I wasn't as dark as my brothers, but... It was rough. I won't lie. It was rough because, you you know, the fighting and the this and no, you can't go in here. No, you get yeah, only your dad can come in and we're standing and wonder what's going on here. You know, we, we couldn't understand the racism back then. And, and even till today, you know, sometimes you try not to look at it, you know, but it's there. Maybe not as bad, you know, but it's sometimes you you confront and you're like, oh, wow. You know, and even when we moved here, um, this was all Polish back in the 50s and 60s Ukrainian and Polish the whole area and St. Boniface school I'll never forget which is two blocks away on Susque Susquehanna Avenue that was all Polish and, and and Russian I think Polish and Russian or Ukrainian I'm sorry Ukrainian so they won't allow us to go to school there and we were two blocks away so my father had to take us all the way to 8th and York which was St. Edward's Catholic school and they accepted us but we had a walk like seven eight nine blocks because we didn't have a car to go to school because they would not accept us because we were Hispanics and so just to be clear also St. Boniface is the one that Sister Carol Keck yes would eventually yes run. okay yes yes okay yes but that was later in the time yes but yes. you know it, it goes to show you that as a child you know, I used to say, but dad, why can't, why do we have to walk all the way so far? And, you know, he had to be honest. Well, they don't want Spanish kids in their school. I'm like, what? You know, and it was, but that's just the way it was. You know, that was life. Of course, years as years went on, you know, then they finally, you know, eight, ten years later, you know, whatever, when I was in high school, then they started to accept more Hispanics because they were moving into this area, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, we also had Kensington and, and uh, uh, Front Street. That way was all white. So they didn't want, they used to have the little conflicts with the Spanish kids, you know, especially in the park, the, the Nara Square Park here. They would have little fights, you know, because, you know, yeah, you know, like stay in your side. You know, we live over here. Don't cross the street. You know, that kind of nonsense. So as a teenager, you know, you witness that. But now, look, I mean, thank God now, you know, we're all so mixed, it's crazy. It's like, which is nice. It's mixed. You know, black, Spanish, whites, you know, which is nice, which is the way it should be. You know, we're, we're, we're sharing the world, you know, like nobody's better than anybody, you know. Just be kind. Be kind to one another, you know. I mean, prom tomorrow's not promised to anybody. Be kind. That's what I say. When you're in the medical profession and you see so much sick and dying, you learn, you know, you learn quick to treasure life. Squirrel. <laughs> you saw that squirrel? <laughs> yeah, you learn, you know, you treasure. You treasure life and you have a different outlook, you know? Yeah. You do. You, you know, because I take care of young as well as old. You know, not everybody who's sick is old. I tell the young people, you you know, don't think you're going to be healthy all your life. You know, you start out healthy. Sometimes you don't end up healthy, you know. So be kind, you know. I, yeah, we got the children's hospital. That's right. Where, where, that's you know, right. West that's Coast, right. So. A lot of children sick. Even, yeah. you know, I get young patients come through and I'm like, wow. You know, 20s, 30s. I'm like, wow. On dialysis, I'm like, oh boy, what happened here, you know. So, you know, you have to be grateful and thankful for having your health and, you know, for all the gifts that God gives us and, you know, whatever your beliefs are, whatever higher power, you know. I mean, you know, you have to be kind. We're all human. We're all sharing the earth. 
you know, let's let's be kind, you know, let's be good. It's too much, too much um, hate and killings and shootings. And, uh, every time I don't even want to look at the news anymore because the news is distressful for me. You know, when you hear somebody got shot, this, you know, the mall, that, you know, hatred over here, hatred over there, war over there. And, you know, uh, my cousin, he went to Iraq, you know, he did three tours. Today's Veterans Day. So I wished him a, a happy because he did three tours and he was a sharpshooter and it was hard on him, you know, very hard. You know, I see him now and he has two hearing aids because of the bombing and all that. So he, you know, can't hear real well. So he sacrificed a lot, you know, he, he really did to, you know, for, for this country, for us, you know, a lot of soldiers, you know, my father looked in the Korean War, he was wounded, you know, my uncles, I have uncles, cousins that are, you know, did the military or became cops too and served as policemen here in Philadelphia. So I have a cousin right now who's a cop and it's hard, you know, it is, you're trying to keep peace and you know, let's not be mean to each other, you know, there's no point, you know, like really, let's be nice to each other, you know. So, you're, so kind of your vision for, like, this neighborhood, North Square neighborhood, and the gardens in it, uh, is for peace, kindness. Peace, peace, less and kindness, you know, be kind, and, and don't forget, you know, your culture, that's important too. I don't care, you know, I have, we have all kinds of friends that are in the garden, part of the society, you know, Irish, all kinds. I mean, you know, it's not just Hispanics, you know, we have all different nationalities, which is wonderful, you know, which is the way it should be, you know? So yeah, we had Sylvia too. Um, she recently moved, she was a nurse and she um, recently moved. She was there at the- uh, Yeah, I just said yeah, her. Yeah, she, yeah, she was great. She, I love Sylvia, yeah. You know, um, we both have a lot of history. So, yeah. Oh, and my you, mom. Do you want to share anything? For well, the history? It, no. I mean, the history. No, we both. Well, it, I don't think I should share it because it's kind okay. of personal. Yeah. Okay. But we were fine. both sick together, you know, at the same time. So there's certain things that, yeah, you don't want to share. But, you know, she's kind. She's a wonderful person, and you know, I love her. You know, she, my mother loved her, and and you know, she still she lives a little far away from us now, but uh, which I didn't know she moved. And I said, Sylvia, you didn't tell me you moved. She says, yeah, I live in the, you know, old age home now. She says, I says, it's not an old age home. She lives in the assisted living apartments. Assisted living, yes. But she's, she's doing great and she looks wonderful. And I was so happy to see her. I was so happy. I really was. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Not, on that note, being happy to see, uh, being happy to see people. Um, yeah. This has been a really... I guess this has been a really like touching interview for me and yeah. I've learned a lot about right. you know you your family sure. this uh, community garden at 2224 uh, North 2nd Street and you know your experience growing up in right. Fairmount and now Kensington yeah. and I mean in later in Kensington um, but so um, I'm going to turn off the recorder now okay um, thank you again for your time you're welcome Wanda.